Welcome to Captain's Dry Dock and in the Dry Dock today we're unboxing and reviewing probably the most accurate replica of the Star Trek The Next Generation movie franchise, Tunic. Let's make it so. Okay, I've got two things here I'm very excited about from the Netherlands. The beer and this package right here. Yes, I know this is Lefe. Lefe comes from Belgium, but technically, if you know your history, it was part of the Netherlands. And plus, I couldn't find the beer from the Netherlands in Waitrose, Tesco's, or Sainsbury's, so had to make do. So, apologies for that. But we're here because of this box, and I'm going to open it up for the first time, and I'm super excited because it's bespoke, made to my measurements. And I've got other, other bits and pieces for this uniform, but this I've been waiting for for quite some time. And as I go, I'll describe to you exactly how it came about getting a hold of this. And uh, we'll go into detail what it actually looks like and what's entailed in the uniform. Why is it so special? Well, it's special because it is probably the most accurate, and I really do mean this, most accurate tunic from Star Trek Next Generation franchise. Even more accurate than the one in Anavos. And yes, they are incredibly accurate, but this one, this one uses the exact same materials and uses the right color dye in its manufacture. The person who made this, who's got her own business, making wedding dresses. Why am I getting someone who makes wedding dresses for a living to make me a Starfleet tunic? Oh, when you think about it, a wedding dress is pretty special and that needs to be perfect. So you can stand to reason why this is gonna be very good quality. Let's let's open this up. Okay, I've been waiting for a few months for this to be made. Um, basically, when she, she actually had to source the material for this tunic. And when I say source, the actual material they use for the Star Trek Next Generation movie franchise tunics she actually used imported from New York all the way to the Netherlands and then had to send it to a company in the Netherlands, one I think the only one that will dye it for her to the specific dye that was used in the movies. I know, this is gonna be awesome. I'm really, really excited. This, this smile is not a fake, by the way. It's not a YouTube, I'm trying to suck you in, but I generally, generally can't wait to see this. I've been waiting for so long. This is a scene from Pulp Fiction, you know, when the briefcase opens up and then suddenly someone looks in, it's like gold. I reckon it's gonna be like that. Oh, first off, a lovely note. There we go, bridal gowns. Yeah, uh, that's her company. Uh, I, I shall show, give the link down below as well as uh, all the other details. But you know, if you like what you see, contact her. It's in the, so basically the kind of protective material you get for suits, that's what that is. So yes, oh, there you go in the hanger. I've got a free hanger, <laughs> that's gonna be good. You don't, you don't get that with an Anovos. Trust me, I've already got a tunic from them, they just bung it in the bag. So again, I've not seen this before and I can't wait. It's been a good few months and uh, there we go. So if you're a Trekkie, Trekker, whatever you like to call yourself, you recognize that. Oh, the ribbon. No, not ribbon. I asked her about this. That's another great thing about her. As she was producing this, and I'll show these pictures as well, I asked her to show me blow by blow pictures of how she made it because I love watching people make stuff. No doubt if you're watching this channel, you do too. And uh, she showed me how she made this and she corrected me because I asked her, what, what is this? And it's called quilting. Did not know. So it's basically, you've got that bumpy texture. There you go, stitching down it. But already that is looking like screen used. Now, just checking the color on the camera as well as this. So it's not gray and that's the thing. When you look on the TV show or shall we say the movies and that in fact TV show like Deep Space Nine, 
It looks grey sometimes, but it's not. It's got a, a bluey, purpley hint to it. It's very, very subtle. Now, I've seen other makers make this tunic and they either go way too purple, way too bluish, or it's way too grey. Even I've seen light grey. For those makers, I can understand uh, why they chose that because that's how I would have done it. But the guy who actually researched this, which I'll get into later, he knew the exact dye that they used on this. So this is screen accurate. And I'll give you some really close up shots uh, with test cards as well, so you can see for yourself what to look out for when buying your own tunic. You can't smell this, but it smells brand new. You know, you go into a suit shop. <laughs> I must look like a freak just sniffing. Um, it smells of a very nice, well-made suit. Oh, there we go. See, okay, so there's the black. So it's different material. It's like a wool blend, or actually a wool, and it goes into a nice black fabric. Look at that. There we go. Oh, the cuffs. Oh, look at this detail, look at that. A chain, an actual chain so you can hang this up when you first look at it and you think someone made this for you it's not like target primark h&m or even ted baker the french connection where you look at something you said yeah it was made in mass it was like in a like someone made thousands of those again and again this was made specifically for me that's that's amazing the yoke okay so this is another thing about this if you're looking for a tunic yourself for accurate again if you want accuracy okay the yoke, this is the big thing that lets uh, others down in regards to the, saying that they're accurate or not. The colour, the way it, it the corners here, the way the, uh, the quilting goes, even look at that, look. The way it's just stitched. See that seam there, look. That seam goes straight down and follows the quilting. See that is attention to detail. <laughs> I, I'm, uh, trust me, when you've tried sewing like I have, or when you make stuff like I do, stuff like that, not many people would actually notice that. But if you're a maker, you know she consciously made sure that this was aligned. I don't, you didn't need to do that, but she did. Just made it all the way, and it's different, uh, different, um, different direction of the, uh, the fabric as well, superb. Okay, so that's that so far. Let's look at the cuffs. Cuffs are incredible, really are incredible. So it's like they've been turned up. Again, of course, I was gonna go for burgundy. Well, burgundy, red wine. It's uh, so bald, Captain Picard, why not, you know? So that is, that's a really nice touch. I think Anavos, they do this as a separate thing. So you can zip it off and zip like engineering on or if you want to uh, be some other uh, department or like uh, science if you want to be another department you can do that this is actually stitched on which perfect for me because i don't want to change from command um so that's really good the feeling is soft it feels really like rugged i feel like i can actually wear this and not damage it um and it's that's another thing look look at this not many people know about this, about the yoke, but that needs to flap up. So it's almost as if this yoke is a separate thing. Well, it is separate, but it's been sewed on. But this bit here, there's a bit of a lip. So that's another little touch. Again, this is a bit like when you're buying something off of eBay and trying to work out if it's genuine or not, when it's Ralph Lauren or whatnot. These are things you need to look out for. Now I'm pointing out, if you want something super accurate uh, again if you don't if you don't really care about that level of detail that's fine normally i wouldn't trust me but i i've gone all out for this one and uh, it's incredible so let's unzip it oh so this is like an invisible zip because i know with gene roddenberry as well he didn't want creases he didn't want to see zips and they, i know by the time the films came out he passed away but if they still went with that whole idea of like hiding and concealing anything that looked like 20 21st century like zips so here the zip is properly hidden when you open it up there it is and it's got two latches as you can see here two um uh what is it uh loops hooks and loops 
And this sit, by the way, is accurate to the film. Now I'm telling you, every part of this tunic is accurate to the film, even down to the zip. This had to be sourced from a company in the UK and then posted to Caroline in the Netherlands. Yep, because of Brexit, a lot of companies aren't actually posting to the continent because of many issues of tax and whatnot. Anyway, that's politics aside. Yeah, I had to get hold of this zip for her and post it myself to her so she can get hold of it. But this is the exact zip, that, the brand that they used for the tunics in the films. So we're talking about that level of detail, people. <laughs> Incredible. Yes, I know people are saying, how much does all this cost? We'll get to that, we will get to that. And oh my Lord, look at the lining. Now, I've never seen the inside of, the, of these tunics uh, from the movies, unless you've actually handled it yourself. But oh my God, there was a choice when I picked the lining. I had a choice of either matte or satin like this. Apparently this is much more hard wearing and it feels nicer to be fair. It feels really nice. And, there are subtle pockets. Okay, so I'm gonna give you some background now of how do I know it's this accurate. Okay, so I make Star Trek props. In fact, I make Star Wars props, Star Trek pop props. If you watch Captain's Dry Dock channel, you see what I make and I'm open to criticism. If you've got, um, some, if you've got something to say about what I do and you've got some evidence such as it needs to be bigger, smaller, uh, the colors are wrong, I take that on board, research it, back it up and go, yeah, you're right. And then, then I correct. So a gentleman from the Netherlands, that's how I know, <laughs> that's, that, that's the connection to the ne Netherlands, by the way. He saw my Mark I pips, I think I made for Star Trek Next Generation. And uh, he said, and he contacted me directly. And to be fair, he was like, don't take it as an insult. I'm not bitching. He didn't use those words, but you know, he's such a nice guy and he said, I know the correct measurements and what you have are slightly off by a millimeter, two millimeters. I think it's a millimeter. And he showed me actual pictures and actual measurements from the real pips. Turns out this guy is one of those guys you see online who owns a treasure trove of props from the films. I kid you not, this guy I think has free, I think it's free actual uniforms used in the films. Uh, he researched everything about this. I mean, when I spoke to him, and we, now, we are now friends, and uh, oh my God, what he did to make sure this is accurate, what did he do? He found out what this material was, not just what this material was, where you get it from. This material comes from New York. There's no other place to get this type of wool. And why? Because of the direction of the weave. That's how accurate this is. It This is. He's gone so far to make sure the direction of the weave is exact. So if I look closer, you can see the weave goes inwards into the chest. So straight to the middle. And I'll show you some close-ups here. And that level of detail is amazing. Then he found out the actual color of the dye. Very much like if you're a graphic designer like I, there's, there's swatches, there's CMYK, RGB, there's like the um, uh, textile equivalent, and he was able to get the values of the exact dye. So this is accurate as well. Um, what else did he do? Uh, made sure this black material is fine. Uh, I, think, I think he got the pattern from this website here. I could be wrong. I remember having a conversation with him, Bad Wolf. I think he got the pattern from Bad Wolf. He asked the seamstress, uh, I think it's seamstress, apologies if it's not the term seamstress. I hate it when people call me typesetter when I'm a graphic designer. But he asked Caroline to put a pocket for the badge. So when you get badges, especially the ones that are magnetized, like mine, but we'll talk about that later, there's where the back plate goes. It goes into that little pocket in there and then you put your badge right there. So it's always gonna be correctly positioned. That is an awesome touch. That's because you do not want to prick holes. If you bought a tunic or uniform, you know, and you've been, you've had that conundrum, all the other regalia, which has pins, do you put it through that cloth or not? Because it's cost you a lot of money. No, 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 no. That's why I make my stuff with really powerful magnets and no doubt, Oh yeah, by the way, the, the gentleman's name I've omitted from this video because he wanted to be um, anonymous. 
completely understand. Not everyone wants to have their 15 minutes of fame, uh, but for argument's sake, I'm gonna call him Q. <laughs> so Q um, is gonna be his name for t when I talk about the guy who uh, researched all this. I did ask, I did invite him onto the channel for an interview, but he declined, but that's absolutely fine. I'm so grateful anyway for everything he's done. Um, the other pocket, just like a suit, you've got one for perhaps your phone or your wallet. And because it's slightly baggy, you can wear that, uh, have your phone in there and it's not gonna show. Unlike, uh, let's just say, season one, season two, Star Trek Next Generation, when it's like super tight spandex. But that quality is just amazing. Okay, so that is, that is a tunic. The big question now, does it fit me? Bear in mind, I'm in the UK, this was commissioned and someone in the Netherlands made this with measurements I got hold of some time ago by some someone else. So when I put it on, will it fit me? I generally have been worried about this. I know she's made something for me before, the undershirt we'll go into later or perhaps another episode. But we'll see, shall we? Oh. Oh. Do you know what? That basically falls on you. It just completely covers you. It, it just slips on you so nicely. Oh my, sorry about the radiator in the back. <laughs> but like most normal people, we don't have massive walls of nothingness. You know, it's like we usually got TVs in the background or radiators, but that is incredible. Let me just zip this up. Oh, there's some hooks here. Oh, so the hooks, the hooks, if you see, there are the hooks. And so to cover up the zip, you just hook there and there. Oh, this can be a bit fiddly. So what it does, it completely hides the zip. That's, that's what the hook's doing. So it's meant to go just about the waist here, because it's, again, it's carrying on from the TNG, TNG sizes there. So I can do the Picard maneuver. There we go. So if you want to see what a very accurate Star Trek The Next Generation tunic should look like without having to break open some glass from an exhibition somewhere. This is it. So the cuffs are made to be, it's very much like a suit. So the way suits are made, the, the arm length, they're not too long because you want a bit of the shirt hanging out at the bottom. Uh, I only know this from like a couple of years ago when I actually had a good suit, like actually when I bought a good suit. And that's when the undershirt to this will appear. So if you remember from Star Trek, when they stick their arms out, you could see the undershirt. So that's what that is. So there we go. And that just felt it completely square to my shoulders. Look at, look, that is incredible. Okay, so there we go. Nice little detail shot here. Ooh. This feels really comfortable, even just wearing it every day and cosplay. It feels like you're not wearing anything. It's so light, well made, and it's so fitted. This is a really, really good. This is, a, this is in fact incredible. I don't think I've got anything that comes to this standard, even my best suits. And in fact, I would say this is better than a suit because you've got the two levels of material, it's smarter. And to be fair, bear in mind, it came all the way from the Netherlands from... Bear in mind, it came all the way from the Netherlands in this box, all folded up, banged about. It came out, not creased. That is perfect. Look at that. That's not creased whatsoever. So the next thing, let's put the undershirt on as well, which is made by the same person. 